At NGConf 2016, the Angular team announced a new tool called Angular CLI that makes creating and scaffolding Angular applications simple and painless. By now, unless you've been living under a rock, you should at least have heard about it. In this video, we're going to explore and familiarize ourselves with some of the most common commands like new, generate, serve and build by scaffolding a basic to-do list. Before getting started with Angular CLI, let's make sure we have the right version of Node and NPM running. We should be running at least Node version 4.0 and NPM version 3.0. Let's check by going to the terminal and executing the Node-V and NPM-V commands. Great. Next, let's install Angular CLI. We can do this through NPM. We use the install or I command for short along with the global flag to make sure the package is installed globally. Now we have everything installed, we're ready to start making applications. To create a new application, we use the ng new command. Let's do this now. Type ng new to do list and add a style flag. This flag tells the CLI that we want to use the SAS preprocessor for our styles instead of defaulting to CSS. The new command recognizes a few different flags, such as the style flag we already saw, as well as routing and a few others. I suggest you check out the documentation for a full list of options that are available. The output tells us that our project files have been created and NPM is installing the packages necessary to make our application work. So whilst that happens, let's have a look at some of the files Angular CLI gives us out of the box. By default, Angular CLI gives us the packages and scaffolds files necessary for us to unit test and end-to-end -end test our applications. Our end-to-end -end tests go in the ETE folder in the root directory and when we generate components and services, we're provided with spec files for unit testing. To configure our application, we can change config params in the Angular CLI JSON file. Among other things, we can change a prefix for our components, add external style sheets and scripts such as jQuery and the Bootstrap framework, and set up our build environments. The source folder is where we spend most of our development time. Angular CLI creates a component called app which acts as the root component for our application. As projects start to get bigger, this is where it begins. The app component is comprised of four parts. We're given a class file where our component code goes, a spec file to write tests, a view, and a style sheet. The CLI also generates a module file where all the declarations, imports, and providers can be added. Let's have a look at the generate command. Our to-do list is going to be made up of three parts, an item interface, a list service, and a component to output the list. First, let's generate the interface. In the terminal, type ng generate, or g for short, interface item. We can see the interface in our app folder. By default, Angular CLI generates interfaces, classes, and services in this folder. We can also specify a folder in the terminal by prepending it before the name, followed by a slash. Let's generate our list service in the same way. We'll type ng g, but use service instead of interface this time, and call it list. The CLI will generate a file called list.service along with a spec file. One thing to note is that the CLI automatically adds service to the end of the file name as well as the class name, so we don't have to call it list service. The CLI reminds us that although the service has been created, it hasn't been provided, meaning if we want to inject it into our components or services, we're going to have to go through another step in the app.module file. We'll get to that in a second. Before we switch back to the IDE, Let's generate our list component in the same way. Type ng g component list. Great. 
Now we have everything we need to make our list app. Let's start with our item interface. We're going to keep it really simple. So our interface will consist of just two properties, a title, which will be a string, and a due date, which will be a date. Now let's add some code to our list service. We want to hold a list of items, so let's start by importing our item interface. Next, we can create a member variable called items, which will be an array of items. Lastly, let's add a couple of methods to add and delete items from our list. If you remember, when we generated our service, Angular CLI warned us that we need to provide it before it can be used. So let's do that. All we need to do is import it into our app module file. Now we can add it to the providers array. Great, now we're able to inject our list service into our list component constructor. Unlike our service and interface, when Angular CLI generates a component, it creates a new folder inside our app folder. There's a few files it gives us. First, we get a component class file where our logic goes. There's also a spec file for our unit tests, a style sheet, and a view file. Let's start with the component logic. First thing to do is import our list service and item interface. Now, let's inject it into our constructor. We're going to make it a public variable so that we can use it directly in our view file. Let's write some code to generate a few basic items in our component. We'll use a for loop to add some items to our list. Now we have everything set up, let's output our list in our HTML file. We're going to loop through our list items and output them to the screen. One thing I always have trouble remembering is a syntax for Angular's ng4 directive. Luckily, Angular CLI has a convenient command to help us search the docs. In our terminal, we can type ng doc followed by the search query, in this case ng4, and this will open the search results in our default browser. Now we're armed with enough knowledge to output our list. We'll use an unordered list with an ng4 outputting the title, the due date, and the delete button that will call our list services delete item method. The last thing we need to do is add our component to the app component view file. As I said before, the app component acts as the root component of our application. Now we have our application coded, it's time to test it. 
we can use the CLI serve command that will do a few things. First, it lints our code to make sure there are no syntax errors. Then it builds and minifies everything. Finally, it spins up a server that watches for changes and automatically reloads when a file changes. We can view our application by navigating to localhost on port 4200. Great, seems like everything's working. Finally, let's have a quick look at the build command. Angular CLI lets us build our code using custom variables depending on the environment we're building for. For example, we're looking at the production environment variables. The CLI adds a production setting that sets some options for minification, but we can add our own here too. In our terminal, we can type ng build with the prod flag to make Angular go through the build and minification process and create a new directory called dist with the output files ready to deploy to a server. It's really that simple. Thanks for watching. In the next video, we'll look at how easy it is to load the Twitter Bootstrap library into Angular 2 and style our list application to make it look presentable.